Yeah, we got it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so the federated content tool um, arises from the need of being able to share content across all the EFSA's websites. And uh, we wanted to create a synergy where uh, the code remained where it was originated, but it could be easily shared and, you know, at a granularity that made sense for everybody. And... Um, so we looked at several ways that we could do this, and, and one thing I want to point out that what we are sharing here is content, not uh, data. Data says, I know Estes is, is big in on data. But um, we looked at the our syndicated um, tools, and uh, they usually tend to be a one, a one way, you know, they go one to many ways of sending data. So we um, created this tool so we can federate the RSS feeds and create a many-to-many -many synergy. While the original content can remain in place uh, where it was created. Okay, so how, how does the tool work? We, we have all the DACs in Earth Data um, going into the tool, and they can use the tool to create RSS feeds or to ingest existing feeds, and then they can manage it there, and then they can go in and register for feeds from other, you know, that other DAGs of or Earth Data has created. So that was our approach: is to use the the ubiquitous RSS feed to create to leverage it for this uh, tool. So as I mentioned, one of the great things about this is that the the information remains where it's created, but it can easily be shared across the EFTA's um, set of, of of team members. I mean, all the DAGs and all the the other websites. So how does it work? So here's the model, and we want to um, bring to here that we have. Those are, are called the producers, and the producers are the ones that go in the tool and they create the feeds that they want to be shared with others. And then we have the tool aggregates those um, feeds, and they can come in and they can manage the feeds from inside the tool. And then there are the consumers, and they go in and they register to use the feeds via subscriptions. And they can use, you know, as you can see, some will be contributing very little, some others will be contributing more. In the same way, some uh, DAGs, if they want to use a lot of the information from other places, they will use much. Some other ones will maybe occasionally be interested in using using the tool. So so we can support the various. Hey, thank you. But I try and uh, SSH to core data at coredata.shore.embari.org. Hey, can you mute? Okay, I think we're I muted him. <laughs> okay, so we have the producers have the ability to federate their own content if it already exists, or you know they can also create use the tool to create their content. They they can um, use tag their content with predefined keywords and search parameters to make it easy for others to find out the information that they want. And they can manage the feeds from within the tool. The consumers, you know, have the ability to search and show me all the feeds that, that meet the criteria that I'm interested in. And then they can create subscriptions where they, you know, based on a given criteria, and then they can manage their subscriptions. Okay, so before I go, I just want to review a little bit about the anatomy of the of a feed. So a feed is just a channel. And you will see uh, the tool when you go in, you can create a feed, and it's just going to be the empty channel. And then we have to go in and we have to add items 
that are the individual items per feed. So the required uh, fields for an item, you always have to have the title, the description, and, and, and a link. Similarly, the subscriptions are merely feeds. So when you create a subscription, you have to first create the channel, which is like your container, and then you go in and then you add the items to, to them. Okay, so let's uh, start with the demo. Okay, any questions uh, in the meantime? Well, since I started in a different computer, so we have to set it up, but then we had it. No questions so far? Okay, so um, we understand that there would be uh, about maybe three different types of ways that uh, producers can use the, the RSS feed, the federated content tool. We will have um, producers that already create their own feeds And then, um, just one second, let me log in here. Okay, I had. Okay. So, so um, an example of that will be like the Podak. You know, they can have their own feeds and they can decide to just manage them on their website, but they will come in here and they will ingest the existing feeds into the tool. Um, another way that we can use the tool will be um, you can create a, a feed. For example, Drupal already has a, an automatic way of generating feeds from your website. So Earth Data has a standard um, feed that is created through Drupal, but it might not be as clean as you know how we wanted it to be. And so we may want to go in and ingest that feed and then clean it up and make it make it work as we want. And another option will be somebody like maybe CD Disk. They have an uh, HTML-based website, and um, that means that they will they they can use this to actually create the RSS feed that they are going to display on the, the website. Okay, so we this is our dashboard, and here um, when we are talking about a producer we will use my feeds you will create your feeds from here and you will manage them when you're talking about a producers and I mean the same person can be a, a it's just a role so the same person can be both a producer and a consumer and then they can come here and manage their subscriptions we can view all feeds and um, we have a way of managing the groups that way um, we know who the users have access in based on on their DAC, we can we know who's creating the feed and it's going to also be used as a tag of the feed so that we can we can do. And then we have something in in here in the dashboard that we call the newsletter, and is many many folks after we did the initial uh, beta release, they were interested in just getting notifications when certain feeds were updated or added to the system. So um, folks can come here and then they can uh, register for a notification of, you know, feeds based on some kind of criteria and then they they will go. So if I have time, I'll come back and, and show you how that that works. Okay, so you, you have a feed and, and um, in, so how would we go about so I mentioned to you that there is, will be somebody where we can just already have our feeds in our own websites, and I'm going to be using Podak as an example. And uh, they use they have a Drupal site, 
So, you know, Drupal creates already, you know, from the homepage a feed. And uh, right now we're only supporting RSS uh, type of feeds. We know that there are other types, but we will do that. And then maybe you say, okay, I'm ingesting and I want the tool to be getting constant tools uh, uh, updates because this is a very active website and we, we just want to be kept up to date. So we import the feed. So we have the, the product feed. Now since I imported the entire feed, I can see that I have, I can see all the items in that feed. So Poetac may decide, remember here they're acting as the producers. So this is just the standard feed that comes out from their website. So they they will keep it this way. They're not going to manage it here. And this is hypothetical. It's an example. And they, they will manage it from their own website. So let's just do in, in all the updates will be displayed here, and folks could come and register to to subscribe to their feeds. Okay, what would be the other scenario will be, for example, let's say that we want to create an Earth Data feed that we can um, that we can uh, use. So the Earth Data side is also a Drupal site. So. It creates automatically a feed, so we're going to leverage that. And we have here, um, so this is the feed. And we want to ingest what is already in the home page. So basically what it does, it brings us this stuff, and we're going to import it. But then we realize that, okay, did I type something wrong? Data oh. The XML, I guess. XML, okay. Okay, so here is our feed. So if we go in and we view the items, we say, okay, we want to create an RSS feed, but whatever um, it, it comes from the from the standard default uh, feed that is created from Drupal, we don't necessarily want our feed to include that. So we can come here and say, you know, we really don't want to have this article and this article and this uh, showing in our feed. So you can come in and then you can um, delete those. And this way you can start customizing your feed. So we can uh, Delete it. Yes, I want to delete it. And uh, maybe I want to make sure that I tag all these feeds in a special way so that folks know how to find it. And maybe I will tag this with Earth Data Homepage Features. Okay, so I'm going to call it that, and it's going to be tagged like that. And, you know, we submit, so we, ha we have tagged, um, oh, I didn't select, I suppose I've selected all the items, because I want, I already deleted the ones I didn't want. So we will tag the remaining ones with our data on page. and we submit. Okay, and you can have multiple tags too. So this is the second case where, you know, we can start with a feed that's already created, like the one created automatically, and customize it as we wish. And then we have a case where uh, folks can come here and create and use this to create their their own feeds. So. Um, let me create a new window here, and I will use as an example uh, the CDDS website because I know for a fact that they are XML only, 
and you know how are they going to be able to leverage this to to create feeds that can be used by others so let's go here to their news page and i want to create a feed that that uh talks about this this news item here so we can go back to um our feed that i'm creating and now remember that we have to first create the container. So I'm going to create the container, and I'm going to call it CDDIS uh, RSS. And, uh, you know, you may put their URL, but right now we're just creating the container, so we are good, and we're going to save this. And uh, so I have my container, and if I go look at it, I, I don't have any items in in there yet because I haven't added any. So let's add an item. Let's add the news that we um, and uh, so we have the news. Let's get um, a title for the news and. Uh, I need to come here and get the 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 website URL where folks will be redirected to read more about it, and then we can come here and we're gonna add that. It automatically stamps it with today's date, but you know if they want to add something else, they can do it. They can tag it here or they can tag it later, and let's. Um, Save the feed item. Okay, so we have demo how somebody can already just reuse their their um, RSS feeds and do very little. That was the Podak example. We showed how the Earth data um, can come in and, and use it and customize it the way they want. And then we show how we can just use it to create a feed that can later be. So if you, if we take a look at it, at it here, we have. Uh, This one? Okay. So if you look, then you can get. Okay. So, sorry. This uh, had it all set up in our my computer, but uh, but anyway, you can go and you can see that um, you can preview your feed, and then you can use the URL from here and include it on your website. Now, talking about that, we could, like for example, um, we may want. Um, Similarly, we we can we're going to do the subscriptions, but you can see here in the feed we have what it's called the widget, and I'll demo that um, in. But how it can be used, for example, for CD this, they can use the widget and decide. Okay, this is how I want to organize my feeds and how I want them to be uh, displayed. So let's just show here in Earth Data. So we just grab everything that was on the home page, and now we want to add a widget. And a widget is just a format, so maybe maybe we just want to call this Earth Data News, and all we want to have the news. And then let's preview what that that feed that we just created looks like. Okay, so we you can see. We, this is just straightly ingested from from um, our homepage, and you know it's long. And so I decide, well, this is just going to go in a in a small window in the Earth Data homepage, and I really don't want to display all this data because it's somewhere else. So I just decide all I want to do is I want to display my links and my titles. And well, maybe for the for the feed, I will keep the description. But for each of the items, I'm not interested in the description. Let's just sub do the link and in the title. And uh, you know, let's leave it to display five items because now it's going to be smaller, and it's going to be a, maybe a very um, small little window. So I want to allow pagination, and then I do a preview in figure out 
is this is what I want to do. Yes. So it's going to be a little window, and it's going to display the titles of the feeds and the links, and there will be pagination. So I'm pretty happy with this, and I save it. Okay, so I have now a widget. How do we use this? Okay, so we go here, and it shows us you can go in and grab the snippet of your code. And this now carries your format that you define. And you go to some page in your website. And so I'm just going to use here, or, or and I just grab a basic page, just showing you how this uh, will work. And I am going to be using full HTML here. So let's make sure I, I indicate so. And then we put our, our snippet, and then we give it a title. So we're going to call it Earth Data News. And uh, we save this. I could have just previewed it. But and it shows. So you see how our widget now you can embed this in your code in your in your website in a very easy manner. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, subscriptions. So all this that I talked about up till now was the producers, how you get your feeds into the tool and how you can produce feeds that you can later use in your websites. So now let's talk a little bit about, you know, how I get subscription to other people's feeds. Okay, so one way we can do this, you can go in and then you can view all the feeds that are available in the system and you can directly subscribe to a feed. So, you know, you, you can just go ahead and subscribe, and then it gives you all the items in the feed. You can decide, okay, I'm really only interested in Earth, so that's the only item, and then going to create a subscription that only includes that, that item. So here we're going back. We first selected the items, and now we have to create a container where those items are going to be going to live. So that's one way that you can get a subscription by by just selecting all the feeds into it. Okay, another way of creating a subscription is, you know, I might be a little bit more more manual where maybe you're going to want to have um Aquarius information. And that's all you want. So you're going to call that um, container to be Aquarius. And remember, we're just doing the container is empty. So now we want to add the items that are going to be there. So we go into, into the items, and then we can view all items. And then I can do a search. So I want to filter this by all the items in the system that have the word Aquarius. So we filter, and you can filter by various parameters, since we ran a little late. And then I looked and I said, yeah, this is exactly what I want my subscription. I only want to be subscribed to items that are Aquarius. I'm happy, so I subscribe to, to them. So I come back here and view my subscriptions. go to my subscriptions. So this was my Aquarius. So at this point I can view and then you can see um oh, I didn't have my Okay, so I I have my Aquarius and uh I wanted to view I guess I didn't save it. I thought I saved it. Okay, but then we you will see all the items that you had uh subscribed at that point. Um, we also have an auto subscribe. So once you you have defined a subscription, you can say, okay, I want updates of these subscriptions uh, every time that they happen 
just send them to me automatically. So this is how you create your subscriptions. Another way is you may just want to subscribe and say, okay, I want a, a newsletter that shows me every time there is an Aquarius um, information. And I'm going to filter all the feeds on Aquarius. And, uh, you know, maybe you may want to um, add additional tags to narrow that. And then uh, so you are creating that is going to be your newsletter. You can create several newsletters or just one that has that. And then you start adding who's going to be subscribing to that. So I can add my email here and I say, you know, please notify me every time that, um, you know, and I just want to be really informed every day of what's going on. So you add your, your, and you can add as many people to a given subscription. Oh, I need to say this, sorry. So do this, I want this daily, I want to say it. Okay, and then I can add as many. So, you know, if, if I, I can immediately say, okay, send me right now what new things, and then it will, from now on, it will send me, as I had selected, daily updates on any item that uh, has the word Aquarius. So once I get the notifications, then I can decide to come into the tool and decide, hey, I want to register for that. So you can do it a little bit more proactively ahead of time, or you can just um, get notifications and then go in and decide that that's what you want uh, to do. We also have a way to, to manage the categories, which are the tags. And we have some pretty fine tags, but folks can go in here and add new tags. As, as necessary and so that we can, you know, once we decide what the standard uh, tags are. And that's pretty much the demo. Is there any questions? And oh, one more thing here, we, we have a, a, a link to, to a user guide. So folks that are coming here and may have some additional questions have access to, to, to the user guide. Well, well, thanks, Rosemary. Any any questions from other people before I ask a couple? Well, I, I have a I have a couple. So, uh, Rosemary, who who in the, uh, the sort of the web uh, uh, the website administration team? Who controls the tool for the for the website in the in the DAF or, or the center, or is it any any uh, anyone who's uh, who is signed in can can get a feed or? Hey Bruce, this is Ross. I can answer that. <clears throat> so we have. This is tied into our Drupal accounts. So if somebody, we have representatives through the different decks, and um, it, inside this module, there's there's basically user management. So just because you um, have a, let's say, an Earth Data login URS, or if you have a Drupal account to uh, do part of the CMS, it doesn't mean that you have uh, access to the feeds. You actually have to have that as one of your uh, roles added within Drupal. And then we can. Then you show up inside the user list in in the managing the the sources, and then we can assign you uh, to a source. So that, the example, the DAC representatives, um, somebody like Vicki Wolf, she is um, she has a Drupal account. She's uh, she has the role or responsibility of uh, uh, the um, syndication, and that allows her to go in there with the feeds, and then we actually go in there. And assign her to the source of ASF, so that when they're publishing and doing their stuff, we can see the feeds underneath ASF. Well, thank you. So it's, yeah, it's all managed through uh, through the Earth Data team. 
the development side with Rosemary and, and Greg and those guys out there with Raytheon uh, in California. And then you know, we also manage the uh, accounts and such through Earth Data here at Estes. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Okay. So our, our hopes are for for this um, this piece is that in the future that when when a data center is interested in pushing something out, we have we have kind of a gambit, right? We have some on the spectrum on one end that uh, like Podak and and uh, CDAC and NSIDC they have RSS feeds and they have uh, the the established pieces of their their uh, websites, and then we have uh, some of the other data centers that um, they still run in HTML and they don't have the capability and that's one of the reasons why Rosemary and the team developed that widget is, is to allow somebody with HTML to still you know create a feed and then publish it on their website so the hopes for us in the future are that um, you know when they have a new data set or a new piece of news or something that's going out on a regular basis that not only would they uh, have the feeds working through Earth data, but then, you know, either people like yourself through ESIP or others um, or other data centers, you can subscribe to the various feeds uh, independently so that as, you know, you don't have to rely on Earth data, for example, but you can um, you can see the feeds show up. So, so it's a way for them to have more exposure on the front page. We'll have that updated soon, and you'll be able to see the RSS feeds on our front page. Yes, we we are planning also to you know um, to have special tags like you know a feature item. So if if a DAG or somebody wants to feature something specific, you know we just look at those tags and we we will um, display that in a more prominent place in the Earth Data website. So it it really creates a nice synergy between all the DAGs and Earth Data. Any other questions? Well, I also want to uh, just say how good I, I think it was a such a great idea to have the newsletter um, because um, as, as a way for people to discover uh, content that they may want to uh, create a feed from and, and not have to. So you're pushing pushing stuff out too it, uh, by email. I think, I think that's a really clever idea. Yes, and then people can can get. It's not just send me a message of all the feeds that get updated. They they are able to very specific say I only interested in items that have these keywords. And they can they can define each of them of how they want uh, want them to to be. So they they the newsletters become very targeted and hopefully won't be just one more email that that folks received. Yeah, so we have a lot of different keywords and parameters that they can use to narrow down their areas of interest. And those those keywords are taken directly from a keyword um, extraction from GCMD, so people that are familiar. And it's so that we have a, a nice continuity and standardization across the board. Any additional questions? So, how many uh, how many different websites are are connected through this right now? They are either as produce uh, well as as consumers, I guess. Well, right now it's Earth Data, and and we we have a plan. It has been rolled out to all the DAGs, so it's twelve of them, and uh, you know we don't uh, we have this. Uh, and we're working on getting the articles and getting everybody feeling comfortable with the tool. And but the initial rollout includes the data centers and Earth Data. Yeah, we're also thinking of extracting this and and adding um, additional function. You know, using this to to be able to notify when the system is going to be down in Earth Data, when we are going down for services, or 
or any any type of news that we need to to get out and that needs to be current, we're also uh, going to be uh, using the RSS feeds. So this is a, a this is a, a feature or a module with a, with a front end on it that you're you're sharing. How does this distribute it to the Drupal? Well, we started with a Drupal module, but we have done a lot of customization to it. And uh, you know, right now our interest is is for folks to come here in Earth Data and in use use the tool from Earth Data. But um, I think it could be extracted and made into to its own application that that can be you know reused in other other instances. All right. Any uh, any further questions for for Rosemary? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Rosemary. This is a wonderful piece of work, and uh, um, we will put a little. Uh, uh, this is being recorded, so uh, people who are not on the call uh, will uh, make.